Gather round, ye merry souls, and journey back with me to a Christmas long, long ago. Forget your twinkling fairy lights and plastic reindeer. This is a time of roaring fires, boisterous carols, and traditions that would make your modern Christmas pudding curdle. Imagine a world lit by flickering candlelight, the air thick with the scent of roasting meat and wood smoke. So grab your tankard of ale and let's unwrap some of the medieval madness that awaited our ancestors come Christmas time. Now what's a good party without a touch of delightful mayhem? Enter the Lord of Misrule, a mischievous master of ceremonies elected to preside over the Christmas revels. Picture this, a jester-crowned commoner leading a merry band of revelers, turning the established order on its head. Think of it as a sanctioned period of glorious anarchy. The Lord of Misrule, often a peasant or a servant, could demand anything from his temporary subjects, even the king. He'd lead processions, orchestrate plays and games, and generally ensure everyone was having a rollicking good time. This temporary inversion of social norms was all in good fun, a way to release pent-up frustrations and celebrate the season with unrestrained joy. Imagine the startled faces of the wealthy as their social inferiors playfully bossed them around. It was all a bit topsy-turvy, utterly chaotic, and a jolly good laugh for everyone involved. Hold on to your hats, because things are about to get truly wild. You might think you've seen it all with the Lord of Misrule, but medieval folks took their festive shenanigans to another level. Inside the church, no less. Brace yourselves for the Feast of Fools, a bizarre yet oddly charming tradition observed around New Year's Day. During this peculiar celebration, low-ranking clergy members could briefly step into the shoes of their superiors, often with hilarious results. Imagine a deacon dressed in bishop's robes delivering a sermon peppered with jokes and bawdy songs. But the real star of the show, a donkey. Yes, you read that right. The donkey, symbolic of the donkey that carried Mary and Jesus to Egypt, was led through the church amidst much fanfare. The congregation would sing playful hymns, some even mimicking the donkey's braying. It was a day of pure, unadulterated absurdity, a time to laugh in the face of winter's gloom and embrace the sheer ridiculousness of it all. Now let's talk turkey, or rather peacock. Medieval Christmas feasts were a sight to behold, groaning under the weight of dishes that would make a modern foodie raise an eyebrow. Forget your roast turkey, we're talking exotic delicacies like peacock pie, a culinary masterpiece that involved roasting a peacock, then redressing it in its feathers before presenting it at the table. And what's Christmas without a bit of figgy pudding? But forget the sweet steamed pudding you know and love. The medieval version was a dense, savoury concoction of minced meat, spices and dried fruit boiled in a bag and more akin to a modern-day haggis. Then there was the wassail, a hot spiced ale, often used in toasts and carols. Imagine passing a communal bowl of this potent brew, each person taking a swig and singing a verse of a Christmas carol. It was a time for indulgence and merriment, where even the most humble ingredients were transformed into a celebration of the season. Now for a touch of the macabre. While Santa Claus is the benevolent gift giver we know and love, medieval Christmas had its share of darker figures. Meet Krampus, the Christmas devil, a terrifying beast with horns, fangs, and a penchant for punishing naughty children. While St. Nicholas rewarded the well-behaved, Krampus was said to swat bad children with birch branches or even whisk them away in his basket. Imagine the terror of a medieval child hearing Krampus's chains rattling in the night, knowing that misbehavior had consequences. Krampus, a holdover from pagan folklore, served as a stark reminder of the consequences of bad behavior. He was the shadow to St. Nick's light, a symbol of winter's dark side and a creature that haunted the nightmares of mischievous children throughout the Christmas season. As different as our modern celebrations may seem, they share a common thread with those of the medieval period, a desire for light and warmth during the darkest months of the year. The boisterous revelry, the feasting, the gift-giving, and even the fearsome figures like Krampus all speak to a deep-seated human need to find joy and connection amidst the challenges of winter. While we may no longer appoint lords of misrule or parade donkeys through churches, more's the pity. 
The essence of the season remains the same. It's a time for gathering with loved ones, sharing stories, and embracing the spirit of generosity and good cheer. So this Christmas, as you sip your eggnog and hum along to your favorite carols, remember the medieval revelers of old? They may have celebrated differently, but their desire to find light and joy in the depths of winter is a tradition we still carry with us today.